Thank you very much for today, IAE. Uh, the most important and respectful organization in energy economics that you know I ever came across in the world, I, I must say. And uh, thank to Dave Williams, who's not here today, but our director general <clears throat> that is well known to all the participants. Uh, my colleague, uh, uh, Maria Chiara, may or may not join. She had, uh, you know, like an um, ill problem, uh, disease problem, not serious, but, you know, so it's better that I handle this webinar myself. So what I will do now is to share my screen with you in order to motivate this uh, uh, talk. It's an academic, so very boring for most of you, but I think it could give some, you know, uh, lessons for the policymaker, at least those who are specialized in regulation, like, uh, electricity market regulator. Essentially, what uh, we did was to uh, ask a very, you know, a simple research question after all, that is during the COVID time, a lot of people did a lot of, you know, uh, special things. And we wanted to know what our methodology, the methodology to analyze the market power in the electricity market would have given an answer uh, or, or some insight to the happening in a very uh, uh, extreme time, a time of extreme uh, or very important changes. So uh, this is, by the way, a paper that uh, now has been published in Energy Policy uh, with my co-authors. But uh, uh, the background that is outside of the paper that is interesting for the policymaker and the business people is this one. Let's face the facts. I take Italy because there's a country where I know the data and I work as a professor and as an academician, but you know, uh, we could do this and I have a question for our colleagues at the very end in the very last slide, uh, an interesting research question, so bear with me. We observed a remarkable decrease of demand in Italy in the emergency period. In Italy, the emergency period lasted from the 10th of March when the government closed all the essential with a decree all the activities except uh, pharmacies and supermarkets to buy food once a week, okay? All, everything, complete shutdown of the country. And then with some gradual reopening until the 2nd of June of 2020, when we had a more relaxed, uh, essentially, uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, management of the COVID problem, okay? The hourly demand showed peaks negative over 50% with respect to the corresponding hour or period of the previous year. And prices went down all the way to 20 euro per megawatt hour. For our American friends, it's still 22, $23, okay, per megawatt hour. Compared to an average, you will see of 50, 60 as the usual uh, price in that period, given the input prices and other uh, costs, okay? Then we noticed, I mean, I noticed uh, later, one year later, uh, that the annual report of an Italian Italian electric company made a proud statement at the beginning, say, hey, we had in the year 2020, company records, records a decrease in net generation of 10%, okay, a decrease in cost of 22.5%, a decrease of nominal revenues by 19%, and an increase in profit of 9%. So the first three of these information, I should say actually the first two, uh, are enough to hint to us economists that microeconomic theory really works because we teach to our students, you know, we bore our students in the first year classroom that when decreasing returns to scale prevail, prevail a decline in output should bring a more than proportionate decline in cost because the decrease in returns to scale is actually what we say. We increase output and the cost, you know, uh, increase, uh, uh, you know, uh, more than proportion. Okay, or, uh, so that's enough, as I say, to comply with the economic theory. However, there is a puzzle. What about profit? Why are profit increasing in a period of, you know, low demand, uh, benefits, benefits from the, uh, possibly from the decreasing economies of scale, uh, but you know, uh, what happened? So what we did was to do the following, to pose the following research question. 
We noticed that demand and electricity prices decreased remarkably during the lockdown. So they went, they both went down. However, what happened to the exercise of market power in the Italian electricity market? Now, to answer to this question, we know since a seminal paper that I'm proud to have published in the year 2014 in the Energy Journal, one of the two respectful journals that Rebecca mentioned of the IAE uh, previously, <clears throat> we have published, uh, uh, by the way, following the seminal paper of Frank Volak of, of uh, 10 years before, but we have published a paper in which we have uh, put, set the framework to estimate indirectly the exercise, exercise of market power using the learner index. And I will explain in a moment what it means. And we have done that for every hour of the day ahead market for the entire semester of the year uh, 2020. Should be 20, of course, this is not 21. I'm sorry, there is a mistake here uh, that I cannot correct. But you understand, of course, I'm talking about uh, the year 2020. Uh, 2020. So, here are some uh, background data. Uh, we see the percentage change of the hourly demand in the year 2020 over the corresponding hour of the year 2021. Be careful. We put on the horizontal axis the day, meaning the hours of the year 2020. However, we have taken the correspond starting January 1st, in the picture you will see, you know, like the end of uh, February until March, uh, we have taken uh, the following uh, convention. Uh, because January 1st is a holiday, uh, but then the next day can be a Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Monday, or whatever, we have taken to make this correspondence through the year, the corresponding weekday starting January 1st. In this way, we are not comparing a Sunday with a previous year Monday, but we compare a Sunday with a Sunday, a Monday with a Monday, all the way through the period of 1920. As you can see, total Italy and the uh, regions in which the Italian market due to congestion is divided, north, center north, center south, south, and the two isolated islands, Sicily and Sardinia, which are connected Sicily with one uh, normal uh, DC cable. Sardinia has a uh, uh, CC, uh, high voltage uh, CC cable, two actually, connecting uh, Sardinia with the mainland, okay? You can see that the decline has been more pronounced where the heavy industrial activity of Italy is concentrated, namely Northern Italy, because shutting down automobile, steel makers, glass makers, aluminum makers, or whatever, and all the mechanical uh, factories in Northern Italy has produced, as you can see, a very heavy reduction. Uh, now, if this particular hour, minus 50%, is really you know, a, a representative data or not, I cannot, you know, completely be sure. But this gives you the idea that there has been a, a, a sensible, you know, reduction, while before the lockdown, the uh, comparison with the previous year in terms of volume was pretty much uh, the same. Some temperature adjustment uh, uh, can be done, okay, but in this period, you know, uh, that was the, what happened. Here we see the same data stretching until November 2020 to give you the idea that if uh, 100 is the index number that is equal quantity 2020-2010, that's the percentage reduction that eventually, as you can see, went uh, faded away. And in the second part of the year, irrespective of what is happening, I remind you that even if I comparing Monday with Monday and Tuesday with Tuesday, there are some holidays that are shifting like uh, Eastern, for instance, okay? That is a shifting holiday and other holidays that are shifting in the year. So these peaks and traps can be due to, uh, you know, some uh, problems in the data. But however, that is the main picture. Then I looked also to the Google data. Google data 
that is provided uh, by Google in terms of percentage changes uh, with this, of mobility uh, with respect to the workplace. So people were going to the workplace pretty much you know, in the same way or a little bit less before the 10th of March. And then there was an incredible, as you can see, uh, negative variation of mobility. So not only uh, workers did not go, excuse me, not only factories closed down and didn't uh, demand electricity, but also workers did not go to their uh, job places. Uh, when they resumed, you know, pretty much, uh, uh, as you can see, then the Sundays uh, is, a way in which, is a day in which the mobility change is less meaningful because people don't go to work uh, to, uh, to, in, on Sundays in the workplace, neither with or without the lockdown, okay? Here we see uh, the same uh, analysis stretched until November, 2020, just to show you that there was you know, a, a gradual uh, going back, but not complete because of the smart working, okay? So we wanted to take, to consider also this, the smart working, you know, has kept uh, many public employees, for instance, back at home, uh, all public offices were doing remote working, okay? On the contrary, you can see that what Google represents as the mobility toward uh, residential uh, destinations increased, meaning people remained at home 30% more during the lockdown period. That's the idea, okay. And then gradually uh, started to go out. And this is the same picture stretching until as you can see, uh, November. Why is it important? Because you can see that during the summer, uh, essentially mobility uh, differences went down to zero. With the, at that time, end of the year 2020, the wave that came you know, and preoccupied and worried the entire European again until Christmas with other lockdowns uh, you know, uh, started to increase, as you can see in uh, October, November, uh, October, November, okay? Now, uh, to have a more uh, important picture of the electricity market, here I show you what was the mean uh, volumes uh, before the 10th of March in the lockdown period until the 4th of May, when the partial relaxation of the lockdown happened, some economic activities reopened, 4th of May, 3rd of June, and then after the 4th of June. We are showing two typical hours of the day, two in the morning. so heavy industrial activities who work, didn't work in the night with the night shift, eight in the morning, uh, two o'clock in the afternoon and uh, 20 or eight o'clock uh, PM, okay? So we wanted to show you, we couldn't show you 24 of these pictures, but this is represented what has happened to the volume. Certainly a sharp decline in volumes and the same happened with prices. This is the, the price, excuse me, the price in the same selected hours, two in the morning, eight in the morning, two in the afternoon, eight uh, in the evening, uh, shows, as you can see, uh, uh, a cer certainly a regime shift or, or a down, you know, uh, uh, downward um, trend uh, average in the period of the lockdown, okay? Now, <clears throat> here we can show you uh, the same type of variation with respect uh, to the year 2016, so that you can you know, account for whatever you know, changes in industrial structure or whatever. As you can see, the typical uh, uh, you know, uh, change with respect to the year 2016 of the three past years, 17, 18, and 19, is pretty much you know, uh, around the zero, except let me tell you, there are some holidays here that can be different, you know, moving, moving holidays in Italy, as I told you, uh, the 1st of June is a holiday that is sometimes connected with uh, a long period of holidays. Um, certainly in the year 2020, there has been, you know, a, 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 a certainly a sharp decline. And the same thing you can say for the prices. See, prices for whatever reason, we're having these, uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of, you know, uh, uh, level with respect to the base year 2016. Uh, in the year 2020, they went down. Okay, so much for the data. Let me be very brief because I don't want to bother you with the usual assumption 
of an oligopolistic firm profit maximizing, which uh, is essentially considering the residual demand. Uh, if you have a linear residual demand uh, with a quadratic cost function, and you compute the markup as the inverse of the elasticity of demand with the minus sign in front of it, okay, you can have with the parameters uh, linear PA minus BQ and CQ plus ZQ square, you can have a formula for the learner index. I put some numbers, you know, just to calibrate the pre-COVID and the lockdown period, assuming essentially that something must have changed in order to rationalize the uh, increase in the profit, in the markup, okay? So that's the typical uh, demand pre-COVID, marginal revenue pre-COVID, marginal cost pre-COVID. Imagine a big uh, downshift of the demand and possibly a downshift of the marginal cost curve for whatever technical reason, rearrangement of the production, um, workers going, uh, workers put into smart working, uh, fuel shift, whatever can make a shift in the marginal cost curve, then you have a new equilibrium with a new markup, okay? And that can be proportionately higher than the previous one, okay? But that's a theory. So let me show you some empirical results. Here we have the analysis of the entire market, essentially the, uh, from January to June, you know, is the 4,000 and something uh, half of the year um, hours of the, uh, okay, of the year. You can see the Herfindal index which is the typically the index used by the regulatory authority to purport that they analyze what is the market power. As you can see, pretty much, you know, in the North is, uh, is the most competitive area, 1000, in the South, 3000, 1000. So essentially no big changes in the Erfindal index. But what about the market segmentation? Well, less congestion because of lower quantity. So the number of hours, as you can see, in which uh, uh, you divide the sample, before the lockdown, there were 1,632 hours. During the heavy lockdown, 1,343 hours, and so on. As you can see, the proportion, essentially, of the hours in which the market was uh, non-congested bus bar zone increased from half to over two thirds, okay, 74 hours, okay? So perfect situation for a more competitive market. Now, what is then what we have done? Very simple. This picture essentially uh, represents the operations that we have done. We have uh, taken the individual bids of all the suppliers and the, cast, the purchasers, the wholesale retailers in the Italian electricity market in every hour. That's a million of records of data. We have constructed a supply function of bids, a demand function of demand bids. And then we have uh, considered the residual demand, I will show you in a second the names, of the six main operators on the supply side. And then we have made the mirror operation on the demand side, assuming oligopsonistic behavior on behalf of the main purchasers in terms of strategic bidding ex ante in the market, okay? So then we have constructed uh, our uh, measure of learner index, okay? And then we provide you some econometric estimation of the J, firm company, learner index, zonal learner index because it's computed uh, netting the congestion effect. Okay, if you have a congestion effect, then you know the prices be, will be higher in the importing zone and lower in the exporting zone only for the effect of congestion, not for the, from the effect of the bidding, this is the contribution of our original article, as I said, in the Energy Journal in 2014. And we have regressed this on 
some uh, the price and then some dummies representing the share of residual uh, if there is market coupling uh, a time you know uh, like week uh, the week of the year so like a time trend uh, if there is a, the the weekend dummy the period of lockdown and other time dummies representing hours during the day when there is a very high share of, of renewable energy by the way and especially times uh, hours in the night 8 9 10 11, uh, 10 in the evening when there is uh, essentially a much more need for fossil fuels plants because the renewable energy are off and then we put four research questions is the exercise of market power on the supply side increasing during the lockdown yes or no is a, uh, you know, is a testable hypothesis. Is the stricter lockdown associated with an increase in market power in special hours, like those evening hours in which the fossil fuels are more uh, pivotal or important? Three, uh, is there a, a decrease in market power when the renewable energy is, market, is marginal technology? Uh, I mean, that should have happened anyway, so we, wanted to check if this behavior remained during the lockdown. And then we tested a fourth hypothesis on the demand side. Is the exercise of the oligopsonist, oligopsonistic market power increased or decreased during the, the period of lockdown? So these are the testable hypotheses. Here we have some learner index computed for uh, the main operator, in Italy, they're called Enel, Edison. These are names that you may know, of course, in all the world. Any, okay. Uh, these are multinational that maybe are well known for every international uh, participant. Then we have other uh, important uh, uh, local utility like A2A is the utility of Northern Italy, of Milan, Axpo, uh, Hera. Okay, these are uh, here is from Bologna, Expo is from uh, you know uh, Northern Italy again. So these are important uh, uh, you know uh, suppliers. They have certain you know uh, generation generating power. Okay, so uh, this table is saying something like this: one, you know, uh, Enel uh, exercise has a market power of around fifteen percent uh, when the market is unsplit and 10% when the market is split, okay? So that's the idea. Then we did the same thing on the demand side. Demand side, as you know, because there are uh, integrated, uh, vertical integrated companies, NL has also, you know, uh, a branch uh, purchasing electricity in the market, A2A is the same thing. Hera, uh, Green Network and Alperia are pure uh, uh, wholesale, uh, customers in the wholesale market selling electricity to final customers uh, in the retail market, okay? And here again, this entire analysis shows you their degree of market power. For instance, Enel has a degree of market power of 10% overall, okay? Then uh, I will show you uh, the regression, okay? So the regression essentially regresses each column here on the supply side, as you can see, represents a generator, Enel, Edison, ATUA, any Axpo, Hera. We regress the zonal index on the equilibrium price and all the dummies, weekend, uh, number of weeks, dummy lockdown, dummy peak hours, dummy during the morning hours, dummy during the night hours, dummy during interaction, during uh, the lockdown in the evening hours uh, and essentially other dummies. Okay, there's a lo long list of dummies, uh, dummy for when renewable energy in the market is the marginal technology, okay? Uh, as you can see, the number of observations are 4,316. So they are the number of hours in the semester, January, June. Uh, so it's a control experiment to see what has happened in between when there was the lockdown, essentially. The number of hours is slightly different because some observations, as you can see, were missing for some, for some reason. The data is not completely clean, so we excluded some you know, few hours of the, of the, of the data set. 
but very little, you know. So that's uh, what uh, is the general picture on the supply side, okay? We do the same thing on the demand side, checking uh, for the six main operators, uh, the effect of price, of course, is negative, and then all the other dummies uh, during the lockdown, okay? Uh, I'm ready for the conclusion, okay? Because I will interpret for you essentially the result of our learner index construction and the econometric estimation that purports to explain, tries to explain the behavior of a learner index before March 10, during the period March 10, June 6, and after, okay, uh, the end of June, okay? So we have essentially a composite data set and we are looking for, you know, shift in behavior, essentially. We think that the empirical analysis partly confirms the hypothesis tested. Okay, so first of all, the exercise of market power has increased during the uh, period of lockdown for some NL, A2A, Expo, Hera, is negative for Edison and Amy, meaning that the coefficient of interaction of the initial lockdown period with the number of, of market, you know, is at least, you know, uh, an indication of positive effect of the lockdown to the learner index for four operators. Then the strict lockdown, so the sub period between March and May is associated with an increase of the exercise of market power during the evening hours, okay? The, our uh, dummy that represents this is positive for all operators, okay? Then uh, the difference uh, is actually uh, positive for two operators. Uh, so when we interact this in the rest of the evening hours, what is the lessons to be learned? Okay, I'm a generator. I'm, you know, I have to serve my stakeholders, uh, okay? I have to do, to do something to preserve my profitability. I have a reduction in demand. I have a lot of renewable energy with priority of dispatching, which will continue to, you know, produce due to the beautiful Italian sunshine. Then what is happening is that I do not generate that much profit during the day, but when the lockdown, when the people are at home in the evening, locked at home, and all they can do is to watch television, then the only thing I can do is to exercise my market power because I control my gas fire, or in Italy there is not that much coal, but certainly, you know, my fossil fuel plants, okay? So that's the story that the economist is saying knowing very little about engineering, I confess, okay? But that's the story we can see. Then, contrary, on the contrary, the market power decreased when renewable energy sources, typically solar, is the marginal technology, okay? We find a uh, uh, coefficient of the dummy rest negative, uh, and the interaction uh, in the period of lockdown is negative. So that means that uh, uh, essentially, when there is a reduction of demand, exceptional time, it's true there are decreasing marginal costs, but there is also more competition from the renewable energy. Why is this important? This is important because it's like a general rehearsal of what will happen with the decarbonization and the transition in the years to come. Okay, uh, as you know, Europe, uh, now America is following, but Europe has launched uh, since last year, the famous uh, EU next generation and the national and the recovery and resilience uh, uh, plan is pouring a lot of money to target the complete net zero carbon emission in the year 2050. What does this mean among other things? An increase of the renewable energy share. So our exercise in the lockdown, at least, is providing some indication that Ceteris Paribus, that is, if nothing uh, uh, changes in the transition, we will go toward a situation in which the rest technology is more and more important. We have experienced this in the lockdown period because of the reduction of demand. 
in proportion. And my conclusion is that uh, then uh, this is a general rehearsal, as I said, of what will be the music played in the transition period. Final hypothesis, the exercise of market power has also increased during uh, the period of lockdown conditioned to the market segmentation. So remember the oligopsonistic market power is actually to uh, bid a lower price than the competitive one, okay? So they have uh, gained uh, that benefit on the demand side while the uh, sellers were benefiting of an increased bid price on the supply side, okay? So that's my general conclusion. On the supply side, lockdown, uh, former public ownership and evening hours has increased the market power. power. Rest marginal technology, weekend, so low demand period reduction of the exercise of market power. On the demand side, same uh, uh, final conclusion. Increase in the demand side market power during the lockdown of peak hours. Uh, a decrease during the weekend, okay. Uh, uh, so when there are less tight conditions, okay? So that is the general uh, conclusion. Uh, now, the policy implication is important because the fact that the Erfindal index did not change significantly during the exceptional time, but we show that the learner index changed for the worst, it's a clear indication that the regulatory authority should do something better they should adopt a monitoring instrument and abandon uh, old fashioned technology of using the Erfindal index if they want to monitor the market efficiency, that is competition, which is the negative of the exercise of market power, no, it's a complement, in, in exceptional times. And in the future, when there will be more and more renewable energy. So they have to face a new phase of their behavior and capability of being effective, uh, you know, regulators. Okay, so uh, we have essentially developed. That's my final conclusion. An analytical framework that can be applied easily in unstable or very heavy changing context, when the alteration, the changes in market structure, can give anti-competitive behaviors. And my final, final call is to all researchers in IAE, especially those in Europe. Friends, colleagues, let us form a permanent study group to monitor the exercise of market power in the various electricity market, because this is only the, uh, you know, Italy is after all, you know, only what is it, 10, 12% of Europe, you know, but we have to see what has happened in German market, in the French market, or mainly in the Spanish market. So I, you know, and I know there are much more there are colleagues much more talented than me, by the way, uh, in the European, and of course we can uh, extend this to all the rest of the world, if you, wherever you have organized electricity market, or caught in Texas, of course, or the New England or whatever, Canada, the Canadian, you know, colleagues, let's try to make, you know, a minimal effort uh, not something that is very time consuming, but something that can be like a repository of our coordinated analysis of what is happening in the electricity markets. Because, and that's the final challenge I give to the economic profession, we have established the competitive market uh, with the European directives in the 1997 in Italy and in England before, and in America uh, pretty much in the mid of the 90s. It's about time to ask whether this was a successful or not framework. Because if we continue to see prices above marginal cost, then it means that opening up the competition uh, must, let's say, needs to be improved. And the lesson is formidable for the other, I mean, America, England, Europe, we are a billion people using electricity, but there are six other billion of people in the rest of the world, you know, now increasing their level of welfare, of electricity consumption. Uh, uh, almost a billion is not, does not have access to electricity. What type of market structure and, you know, and lesson are we providing to, uh, share of the world population, which is six times larger than us. 
6 billion in the rest of the world with respect to 1 billion. Is this really the way to go? I continue to say that an economist should always question and never take for granted uh, what he's analyzing. And that is my best, uh, essentially, wish for us and for our future young researchers in the field. And with this, I thank you very much for listening to this presentation. OK, and I stop sharing the screen as well, OK? So I did you know, a presentation which was dense and condensed. So I decided you know, to, to take less than the you know, usual uh, hour, because uh, it's, a, after all, a boring and very you know, uh, IAE webinar sometimes you know, are much more lively with a lot of participants and, and interesting people. So uh, that's why you know, I'm here you know, uh, ready for you and uh, for eventual questions and see. Uh, OK. Uh, OK. Also, I guess Rebecca is uh, our host, and uh, she should take, take the lead of the conversation. You do have a question that came in. It yes. is, uh, could price spikes be explained by exercising of market power? Well, uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, the problem is this one. When you see a price spike uh, uh, in the markets, you remember the, for instance, in the, uh, the, the North Pool market uh, in early to year 2000 or in California, that was actually due to a um, malfunctioning of the market, okay? So we have to analyze whether the market conditions uh, allow both participants, sellers and buyers, to participate with their own strategy. And if it is a competitive strategy, we should see only marginal cost reflection in the market, or uh, a strategy of exercising market power, meaning uh, increasing with the markup over the marginal cost. Now, if you have um, a situation like the California of the year 2000, one when there was essentially a mismanagement of the regulatory framework. Uh, retail price was capped uh, because of weather conditions uh, and draft and lack of water in the, in the reservoir. The, co the um, production cost, the generation cost went up. So the generators uh, were in front of the situation of generating at a loss or stop generating and they did stop. And because people would continue to use air conditioning and electricity in their houses, we had uh, first a price increase and then a strain of the system, even with blackouts, okay? A blackout is like, uh, for an economist, is like an infinite price, okay? A blackout is a situation, you can compute the value of lost load as a finite one, of course, okay? But what I'm saying is that in terms of market event, uh, okay, uh, if the price you know uh, is too high, then what is happening is that you know something uh, uh, you know uh, this uh, changes or disrupts the market. Okay, uh, if you look at the price spikes in most recent period with the market more mature, especially in the European markets and the American markets, then you have to always make sure that uh, you have to analyze what is happening to the fuel cost. Maybe there is a, a problem, there is a shortage, uh, there is, uh, you know, uh, so the fuel cost in other papers in a structural analysis are typically considered as an important determinant. By the way, why didn't I consider the fuel cost? Because certainly the fuel was not a concern. In the same period of the lockdown, we remember the bizarre event of a um, WTI price of minus $40, so a negative oil price in one day. That was due to a covering of, of course, you know, of a financial uh, derivatives that was uh, for them better to abandon uh, the, the oil uh, supply, uh, the, the, the tanker, rather than, you know, uh, store it at a very high cost. But besides this uh, idea, that was a period of very low uh, fuel prices, especially gas that is linked to oil. So certainly the price spike in the lockdown period uh, were not associated with uh, an increase in the cost. Uh, 
Okay. Long answer for, for a short question, but I hope it was clear. There is an additional question that is uh, from the literature. Is there any strategic gaming behavior to drive up prices? Well, as I say, uh, the we are at the you know uh, low level of the of, you know of the of the strategic analysis by considering an oligopolistic market on the demand side and an oligopsonistic market on the demand side. Essentially, what we are doing is that we are considering that each player is strategically competing because Cournot strategy is a strategy. So there is a the simplest. Uh, now classical Kurno uh, game, Nash Kurno equilibrium, which is you know, like a prisoner's dilemma. So is a strategic game. In the literature, there are much fancier analysis. I can tell you as a professor, as an economist uh, done by young colleagues who are actually making dynamic strategic gaming uh, uh, and they link also the strategic behavior in the day head market with other uh, possible financial markets or financial strategies. Okay, so the answer in short is yes, in the electricity market, there is a lot of room for strategic games. I believe that's all we have, unless you have some closing remarks you'd like to make. No, thank you. I insist in thanking you and Dave Williams for hosting this, uh, you know, uh, uh, and I hope that I, you know, again, I can make this uh, uh, sort of, you know, uh, open call to all the uh, economists, uh, energy economists interested in, in the analysis of the market power to make, you know, a joint, maybe we can write emails to each other and make sort of a joint group that analyzes like those economists to analyze the labor market around countries or the uh, consumption households uh, studies. We should, we could make, you know, that's my advocation uh, through the IAE, which is the most reputable uh, organization analyzing energy economics, some analysis of the, of the market power and the market functioning around the world. Well, our thanks to you as well for an outstanding webinar. This webinar will be available on IAEE's website for future download. If you're not a member of IAEE, we welcome you to join by visiting www.iaee.org. We thank you for attending and I officially close this webinar. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Thank you. You're welcome.